We're now going to work on uh, float settings and the wing balance. And so with that, we've got a decal on the back side of the head that walks us step by step through doing our float settings on this head. And so step one that we need to look at is it says that we need to have our reel out in the sixth position and we need to have this tilted forward in D. So we need to now start up our combine and we need to move our reel in D6 position. So we want to make sure that our head is on setting 6 for our reel fore and aft. So I've got our reel on 6 down in the center we've got our head tilt so I'm gonna tilt our head to setting D by our instructions on the right hand side of the feeder house you can see that little bubble that's on the head so we want to lateral tilt until we are our feeder house is level so don't look at how level the head is to the ground go by our level bubble and try to get our feeder house level. I'm looking straight on and our bubble's looking pretty level right now. I'm now gonna lower my head about 10 inches off the ground and that's where we're gonna start making adjustments. If we looked at our head in the front right now you can tell that our head is not sitting level against the ground so we definitely need to start making some adjustments and as we go through this we're going to get this head all leveled up with the feeder house plate. We're going to now walk through our float settings and getting our float balance set on this head um, and on the back side of the head it has our instructions for that. So the first thing, as we look through here, it says that we need to make sure that our wings are locked and our float is unlocked. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you come out to your outsides, make sure that these are in the upright position and that our wings are in their locked position on both sides. We're gonna then come down to the bottom here and we need to unlock our float on this head. So we're gonna pull this unlock back and we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side of the head. Make sure the wing is locked and our float is unlocked. So that's going to be our first step into here. The next thing we also want to look at is up top we're going to be using these top numbers and not these bottom numbers when we're doing these settings. So we can see there's a pointer here and a little white dot. We need to make sure that when we start out that this white dot and this pointer line up. And we're gonna make sure this is the same on both sides of the head. So on this one, we're not quite lined up. So we're gonna adjust the scale to get it to line up to the pointer first and see if we can make that adjustment. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I just loosened that bolt and I'm, as I rotate this forward, I can't get it to move far enough to get that white dot to adjust. So we got to make another adjustment in order to move this needle to get this to line up. So I'm going to tighten my nut back up here. And now we're going to have to make another adjustment in order to get this needle to line up. Since we couldn't get this pointer to line up, we need to make an adjustment to our linkage here. To do that, we got to come down here and there's a little Allen on the end of this nut that locks it into place. So I'm gonna loosen that up, just the Allen, and we just gotta get it just a little bit loose. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the pressure off this bolt or in order to move this nut. And before we do that, I've got a little Sharpie here. I'm gonna mark the top side of this where this Allen's at. That way I can see where it's at on this nut as we start spinning the nut. So I can't spin the nut right now by hand. Um, so we're gonna try to use our Macdon multi-tool and we're gonna take the pressure off of that now. We can put our multi-tool on here 
and from there we can pull it over and now we should be able to come down and our nut should be loose that we can now hopefully spin it in by hand if you can't you're going to use an inch and a half wrench in there and so we're going to spin the nut in and I can't quite turn it so I'm going to use my inch and a half wrench just to get it turned in at first and we're going to go probably right there's a half of a turn and we're going to see where that comes out first so if I put my multi-tool on here you need to make sure you hang on to it because it's going to go over center and be pulling on you. So make sure you hang on to that when you go back over center. We can now come up and we're going to see how if we've got enough movement here and we do. So I can now get my dot to line up. So I'm going to line my dot up and I'm going to tighten it up with my wrench to get my dot right over that needle so I've got this side adjusted and now I can go back down below and I can tighten up that Allen on that nut so on the inside I'm going to tighten that Allen back up on the inside and where I got that mark that's how I know where my Allen is at in order to tighten it so now we're on the left hand side of the head and we want to make sure this needle matches up again I'm going to loosen up this nut on our guide and I can't move the guide far enough, so I'm going to go back down, loosen that Allen on that nut, and I'm going to mark the top side of it, and then I'm going to, at once I have the Allen loosened, I'm going to pull this over center so that we can spin that nut in. Uh, and this time it's probably going to be about a full turn or two turns in order to get this to line up. So I just got this adjusted and tightened, and now our dot lines up with our pointer, so we've got that step three of our float settings so we're going to come up front here we've got our multi-tool we want to lift this up as high as we can and we're going to put our multi-tool on so that we're reaching forward here and we want to hang on and we want to cam over this head and we need to do the other side of the head at the same time so we can get an accurate reading here so we're going to go ahead and cam over the other side of the head From this point now, we're going to go down to step uh, five because we just did our cam over in step three. So we want to, on this right hand side, we're going to bounce that corner of the head down three inches a couple of times and we're going to see where this comes out to for a reading. So I'm going to go out to the outside end of the head here and I'm just going to push down on this about three inches and let it bounce up. to being right on to um, just a hair on the lower side we're going to go to the other side of the head and do the same thing on this side on the left side of our head we were reading towards one once we bounced the head so we need to make an adjustment here to get it up to two so we're going to come back to our instructions on the back side of our head and we can see by our instructions that we need to make an adjustment here. You know, so which way are we? Are we below two or are we above two? So right now we are below two and it says that we need to make an adjustment to these top bolts up on top of the head and we need to turn them counterclockwise. Before we make this adjustment, I want to double check that the spring lengths were set the same from the factory. So I'm going to take my tape measure first and I'm going to kind of hop up on the inside of this head to check out these lengths. So we're on the back side of these springs where these bolts are at and I want to first check and see how even they are. We're just shy of three and a quarter and we go to the far spring over here. I'm measuring from this top casting 
to this metal bracket here to check out how even we are and we're right on three and a quarter there so actually this first spring we could almost lengthen this distance out here just a touch to make sure that these are both even before we start making adjustments to our head so i want to loosen up this bolt on this side so i can slip off this lock collar uh, in order for us to turn this bolt head and i want to shorten that distance in there so i'm going to turn it just a little bit and then let's recheck it again I went just a smidge too far. Let's come back just a little bit. There. Now I know I'm at an even starting point between both those springs. I'm going to now mark these so that I know what position they're both in. So I'm going to mark these straight pointing back so I kind of know right where the starting point of both of these are at. And I need to loosen up my nut on this side now. So when we read those instructions on the back of the head, it said that if we were below two, we needed to turn these counterclockwise. So I want to move them both the same distance. Then we're going to recheck again how we're coming out on our setting. So I'm going to make one full turn and we're going to see what happens. So we just made one full turn. We're now going to bounce the head again. So we just bounce the head and we're still like, we're more like one and a half. So we're still not quite to two. So we would need to loosen up a little bit more again. bounce the right hand side of the head and we're a little light below two on this side now so we want to make a little bit of adjustment to this side as well so I'm going to mark the center of these bolts and we haven't checked the spacing on these springs on this side so we're going to do that first before making any adjustments. We're at three and a quarter and we're just a little over three and a quarter. So we want to adjust this one just a little bit first. I'm going to crack loose our hold downs. And from there first, we wanted to, we're going to go go one full turn. Let's check our measurement now. And we are pretty close to three and a quarter there now. So we know we have both springs set even. Let's rebounce our head again. Uh, we could make probably a, a half adjustment here to check this out. So again, we want to get it closer to two, and to get it closer to two by our instructions, we're gonna go counterclockwise. So I'm gonna go counterclockwise a half of a turn. these marks on my bolt so I can see the half a turn so I just did a half a turn we bounce the head 
and now we're right on to on this side so we're sitting pretty good let's go ahead and bounce the head on the other side and we could probably do just a little bit more on that side uh, maybe another half or a quarter of a turn on the left side I'll make that adjustment We need to move just a little bit more. We're going to just turn it one flat side of a turn on this side. Let's try that. So we're right on to, dead on on this side. Bounce your side over there again. And we're right on two on that side. So that gets our float set on both sides of the head. We can go ahead now, move our locks back up and tighten them down. So we've got our locks tightened now on both sides that completes getting our float set. Uh, we want to return this cam back, but instead of using our bar to push that over um, and taking the chance of letting it go, we're going to hit this with our palm and make sure that our hands are free and clear. And we just hit it quick and we do the same to the other side. And that released our head back into its position. Our next step when we start adjusting our wing flex, before we make any adjustments to the wing flex, we got a couple of things we want to check. First thing we want to do is make sure that our wing, that we're still in the lock position. Once we're in the lock position, we're going to put our half inch breaker bar in the slot up here. We want to look at our bell crank and we need want to make sure that this slot is level with the top of the head frame so I can look in there and as you move it up and down uh, we're gonna pull it till we're level I would say up just a touch right there we're level so I look through here and I make sure that this is level with the top of the header frame on the other side once that's level and in position we need to go down below and we are going to see a white line on the inside and we want to make sure that where that white line is at that it is at the top of the hook that is to the left of the white line so as we look across at that white line our hook is actually still right above the white line when we're looking straight on uh, in the camera view it's hard to quite tell but because that hook is above the white line we need to bring that white line up a little bit so now we need to come up top again and we're going to come to this linkage right here and we're now we're going to have to bend back these tabs and we need to shorten this linkage just a little bit uh, in order to bring that white line up So now that we have those tabs bent down, we need to loosen up this lock nut. So we've got our nut loose and now we need to shorten this linkage in here. So uh, we can either just turn this by a wrench to shorten it
and we're going to want to shorten it so we're going to go clockwise with it or sorry counterclockwise with it we're going to just make a small adjustment and now we want to go back down and look again so we're going to make sure that we're still we're get leveled with our bar so we're going to come down just a little bit right there I'm going to come back down and look at our white line and looking at our white line it looks like we are right at the top of the hook on this side so we've got this side adjusted good we can tighten our nut back down on this side tighten our nut back down See if we can get to adjust it and loosen up to get those little tabs so they'll bend back up again. Now we got to bend our tabs back up. We've got our tabs bent and now we can go to the other side. So now we're on our right hand side, we're going to make sure that our bell housing is parallel with the header frame. We've got it set with the header frame. I want to come down below and check with our white line on this side. So we can see our white line and the top of our hook and our hook is still above our white line. So we need to bring that white line up a little bit higher so now we got to bend back those tabs again and make our adjustment just like what we did on the other side so we're just double checking again we made some adjustments and we're making sure that our bell crank bell housing is still level with the top of this frame parallel I mean we're gonna come back down and we're gonna check that our white line is even with the top of that hook so now that we've got that white line even with the top of the hook we now have those set and we can start doing our wing flex adjustments so now that we've got this adjusted we can now continue on doing our wing flex adjustments and we can follow the diagram on the back side of the head so we're going to start out now uh, we're going to be on step two we see on step one we still have our reel set in D6 and we're going to be working on the right side of the head first so we need to make sure that we have our floats locked on both sides of the head our wing locked on the left side and unlocked on the right side so I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to lock our float on the right side and I'm going to lock our float on the left side so we just locked it on the left side. Our left wing is in the lock position and our right wing we need to bring down in the unlock position. We're going to use this gauge up here in the center and we see we've got a cable hanging here. This cable we got to bring up and hook around. So we get our cable hooked around up here in the center we want to squeeze together our two gauges because these are going to move back and forth. We want to make sure that they move freely and we're going to squeeze them together centered. Now we're going to take our MacDon multi-purpose tool here. We're going to put that on here and our instruction says that we need to slowly move it both directions two times. So I'm going to slowly pull down on this and we can see until we hit our stops so we hit our stops and now we're going to go back the other way slowly until we hit our stops we're going to move back again slowly the opposite direction until we hit our stops and back the other way one more time until we hit our stops Now we come back to center. So our gauge reads 
that we are on the top side slightly below two and on the bottom side we are right on two. So if we come back to our gauge over here on the side we can look and see where we want to be. So we want to be right, or, right at two on our gauge or even. So if we look at the top gauge it says if our bottom is closer and our top is further away this is what we do and on our second one if our top is closer and our bottom is further away which is what we got going on our top is closer and our bottom is just a smidge over two this is the adjustment that we need to make on in this example so we need to move this camber out just a little bit so when we come up here in the center that's this piece here has to move out so in order to do that we have to make an adjustment here so this is our adjustment we got to move our lock in and it said in order to do the adjustment for that one we needed to move this out so in order to move that out, we are going to spin this up. I'm gonna to have to use the ratcheting end in order to. So we can see that this is, my piece is locked in here. So that's, this is sliding out as I'm tightening that. We're not gonna make much of a turn and we're going to spin these together again. So they're starting back out at zero. And now we're gonna do two times, slowly one way till it stops. We're gonna go back the other way till it stops. Go back the other way and one more time. And then we're gonna check and see how it looks. So now when we look at it, uh, we are just barely on the top side of two and we are just barely below two on that example. So we're gonna come back over to our measurement here and our top side is still a touch closer so we want to slide this out again, just a touch more. It doesn't take much adjustment. Let me move that so it locks into place here. I'm going to spin these back together. And now let's try doing our check again two times. Just completed our test and if we look at that our top is dead on to our bottom is maybe just right above to at this point so we're almost just a touch opposite if anything of where we were before I mean we're sitting we're sitting pretty darn close to them it'd be hard to, to tell the difference there now if anything if we wanted to we could back it back just a touch to get them set so I'm gonna go backwards from where I was. I'm going to move this camber back the other way. We're just going to try just that much. Spin these back together and let's check it again. our second time we're gonna come up here and look and you can see they're both just on the bottom side of two so they're both even at this point and we're good so the next thing we want to do is I'm just gonna spin those back together 
and I want to lock the head up again. So we're gonna lock our head. And then we're gonna got our head locked into place so we can adjust the other side before we took our tool off. We need to make sure we take our cable off once we are done. We're now gonna to go to the other side of the head and make the same adjustments. So we're now on the left hand side of the head. We're on our second time of rotating it to see where we're at. And when we look at this side, we can see that we're just barely above two and we're barely below two. So if we go to our reference diagram at this point, you know, we can see that since the top side is further away, we need to now run this piece in towards the center and not out towards the outside. So we're gonna make that adjustment now. So now we've just made our adjustments. We had to actually move this in a little bit. And now once we finished up, we ended up right on two on both sides. So we've got our ring flex set. And so now at this point, uh, we can lock our wing back in place. And then we can raise our wing back up so it goes in the lock position. So make sure our cable is back off after we get done making these adjustments on this side.